we are the animals. We'll always stay away. And if you think we can't, we'll always find a way. That's why the people of this world believe in Jake, Rachel, Cassie, Marco, Tobias, and Axe. No, Axe. No, Axe. Spy, and here was another Animorphs vlog. So, this book is number three, The Encounter, and it is about Tobias, and here is the cover. See if I can get the angle right. Forgot to tell you guys, there's there's flip book things in each book that I think are interesting. So I'll try to show those as well as the cover. So that's this book. So let's start with some things I've noticed about the series as a whole. Starting every book with a summary of what happened previously is getting annoying. Because if you haven't, if you don't know what's going on already, then why are you even reading the next book in the series? You should be reading the first book. Just like taking time in an already short book to summarize what's going on, I usually end up skipping half of the first chapter. Something else. Why does nobody, not even Jake or Tobias, who have, I am so sorry I'm talking loud, my neighbors are going to be annoyed. It's 1 a.m. Why does nobody, not even Jake or Tobias, who have special connections with Elfangor, call him by his name? Like, they always call him the Andalite. I don't know, they, they heard it, it seems like something they would remember since they remember everything else about that night perfectly. And how has nobody seen Visitor 3 morphed with giant monstrosities? And, you know, the giant spaceships and all that. The construction site's in a very public place. Somebody should have noticed. I mean, screw, screw the idea of everybody sleeping. It's next to a highway. Nobody would be sleeping on a highway, hopefully not. And also, isn't there a residential area? I remember... I think there was a residential area near there. Somebody should have noticed a giant spaceship. Somebody should have heard roars or screams or something. I'm not... I don't know what happened. Did they have like a force field bubble or something? And in the first book they were, they were able to make thought speech when they were human, or at least Jake was. Now they can't. But since the series is very episodic in nature, I think it's a case of pilot episode syndrome. Still, the roles of thought speak are kind of confusing. Still, this is like the third time I said it. So, something else about people not noticing obvious alien activity. Nobody else has noticed how weird it is for park rangers to carry machine guns, because again, National Park is a public place. Nobody's investigating that. There are definitely cops and government officials who aren't controllers, right? Because they say they haven't conquered the whole world. And, um, I did the Mary Sue Lemon test. Cassie is not a Mary Sue, but, well, according to the test anyway, but her character still kind of annoys me with how she's perfect at morphing most of the time, except when she morphs a fish, apparently. I don't know. That's kind of annoying. Now, good things about this. Wow, four minutes in already. I'm gonna have to stuff out. Good things about this book. In the beginning... In the beginning, there was... Man, no. There's God, not man, anyway. Um... She thanks the Raptor Center, so it's, pre it's pretty obvious she did her research, which is good when you're writing about animals. I like, I like their cute friendship moments out where like they banter with each other, or they get in random pillow fights, or they just are hanging out. I remember Marco being funnier than he has been. Maybe it's in later books, maybe I don't remember his cynicism, 
but there are some good jokes in this book. I like Rachel and Marco's banter. I don't ship them though. Platonically, yeah. I really like Tobias's conflict between his human self and his hawk self in this book. He seems to be in the process of grieving the loss of his humanity, although with he, he has the mind of a human but he can't let go to school and stuff and he seems to be grieving the loss of his previous life. I like how it switches to the hawk brain at one point. How the like how the hawk sees things after Tobias chose to surrender. The, this book in general is great at showing the economy of the mind of a person in morph. And it seems to be very similar to how a controller feels. And I like that comparison. I don't know, great emotion in general in the story, just like the last one. The first one is not really because they had to get things set up, but now they're really getting into the emotion of how much this war means to them. Now, some questions. I don't know. It, is his lifespan that of a human or a hawk? Because, I mean, his, he morphed into a hawk which means he's stuck in that morph, but it's not really his original body. They keep saying he when discussing the sorcery. That reminds me of... Fear of a name only increases fear of the thing itself. I think you're ending each block with like a moment of resonant language because that's something that my creative writing professor has told me to look out for. So, one sentence that really jumped out at me in this book is I wanted to go so fast that the memory of killing and eating the rat would be left way behind me, but not even I could fly that fast. And I think that's all I have to say. Anyway. Oh, by the way, yep, I meant my living. How do I. This is our Christmas tree. It, web, webcams are confusing. This is our Christmas tree. Alright, till next time.